Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hokesson, Delaware. Today is October 18th, 2024, and let's jump into the photos from this week. Starting off with the beautiful scenery, the fall foliage is starting to change colors. We're maybe about a week or so out from the peak, but we're starting to see a lot of yellows and oranges. The day that this photo was from had some clouds, but a lot of days this week we've had favorable northerly winds, but a lot of clear blue skies. So good for migration, but not so good for spotting the hawks. How about we start off this week with an adult bald eagle that flared up nicely so that it was completely lit up by the sun. Here we have a hawk that we've been seeing a lot of this week. If we look at the overall shape, it's kind of like a flying cross. We see a long tail and rounded wing tips, so we should be thinking occipiter, but we see a relatively compact shape with rounded wings and a small head, making this a sharp shinned hawk. Here we have two immature bald eagles that were battling it out in midair. You can see the bottom one has flipped upside down and is holding his talons up to protect himself while the other one cruises overhead. Here we have another sharp shinned hawk, and on this one I want you to pay attention to the face. See how it looks like a big eyeball on a small head? That's usually a good sign for sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a small compact budeo in a glide with very pointed wingtips. This is a broad winged hawk, and we're still getting a few trickling through, but by now they're pretty much done. Here we have another budeo, and this one has a very distinctive plumage with a lot of orange underneath and black and white to the wings and tail. And we can see translucent crescents near the wingtips. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a rather lanky raptor overhead. We see a long tail and long pointed wings. This is a northern harrier, and looking at the plumage, it's very white overall underneath with black wingtips and black secondaries. This is an adult male, Northern Harrier or Grey Ghost. Here we have a somewhat large raptor with a distinctive facial pattern and pointed wings. When we have a large falcon, that is a peregrine falcon. Here's a large angular raptor with black and white plumage. This is an osprey. The Hawk Watch is just up the road from President Joe Biden's main residence. So when he's in town, there's always fighter jets circling high overhead. And sometimes with the nice cloud cover, we get to see those jets while they're refueling. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so I won't over explain this one, but it's a nice comparison shot at the Hawkwatch feeders between two finch species that we're seeing. So on the left, we have a male house finch, which are common here year round. And on the right, we have a male purple finch, which have really started to show up in good numbers over the past week or so. So it's looking like it might be a good winter for this species. And looking at the two species, see if you can notice the difference in the color of the two, the facial pattern, and the overall shape of the birds. Those would be the main things to focus on between, again, the male house finch on the left and the male purple finch on the right. Here's a nice look at a budeo soaring overhead, and immediately we see a belly band and dark patagial bars, which should tell us that this is a red-tailed hawk. Looking at the bird overall, it's kind of pale. It does not have a bold, dark trailing edge to the wings or a red tail, so this is a juvenile. Here's one of the non-raptor highlights of the week. We've still been seeing a lot of tree swallows every day, but this is a different species. We see that this swallow is completely brown on top. This is a northern rough-winged swallow, and it was actually the first one of the season. Sometimes we'll see some at the very beginning of the hawk watch in early September, but this year we didn't, so it was nice to pick up one here in mid-October. Here's a bald eagle that sort of snuck in on us and we spotted it sitting in a nearby tree. And this bird's kind of interesting because it's an older immature bird. You can see the head is pretty much almost completely white by now, but there's still a lot of dark in the tail. So kind of interesting. Normally when they have a lot of white in the head, they also have a lot of white in the tail already. But this one's a little bit different looking, just some variation on the typical plumage. Here's another non-raptor highlight, and we've been seeing increasing numbers of migrating Canada geese, up to you know hundreds on the better days recently. But in one flock, a visitor to the Hawk Watch noticed that there was a very white bird mixed in, and they ended up coming right overhead, and it was a single snow goose mixed in with a flock of Canada geese. 
Sometimes towards the end of the season, we see migrating flocks of snow geese, but in recent years, they've been kind of hard to come by during the season. Um, it's a species that winters in really large numbers down in southern Delaware, um, but sometimes we don't see them migrating over the hawk watch, so it was nice to pick one up for the season here in mid-October. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head. We should be thinking eagle. And looking at this bird, we see a lot of white in the wing pit area, which is always a good sign of a bald eagle along with the large head. And we see uh, even trailing edge to the wings and completely dark brown head and body. This is the juvenile plumage. So this was an eagle that was born this year. Here we have a budio in a glide high overhead and we see a thick belly band in dark patagial bars. So we should be thinking red tail and we see that bold dark trailing edge to the wings indicating that this is an adult. And I would say based on the time of year and how heavily marked this red tail is, that this is probably from the Northern or Abieticola subspecies compared to the Borealis subspecies that nests in this area. So we see the Northern or Abieticola ones and from the second half of the season, they just nest up in eastern Canada. And so we're always looking for that heavier, dark belly band, a dark throat that kind of dribbles down onto the upper breast, thicker patagial bars, just much more heavily marked overall than the Borealis. But there's some that are in between that are hard to say, but this one looks pretty good to me. Here we have a small raptor. We see pointed wings, so perhaps we should be thinking falcon. We see that overall it's light underneath. So normally when we see a small falcon that's light underneath, we're thinking American kestrel. And we look at the tail on this bird and we see a lot of orange, which confirms it that this is a male American kestrel. Early in the season, we really struggle to judge which vultures are migrating, but as we get to this part of the season, we begin to see large migrating flocks of turkey vultures. So that's what we have here. This was a group of 40 plus turkey vultures that came overhead yesterday, and it's really cool. They migrate in the same way that we always hope to see the broad wings, where they circle up on a thermal as a group and then all glide together. So when you see this, it's pretty obvious that they're migrating. Here's a photo from this morning. We see that this raptor has very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. And as we watched it come in, we could tell from the flap that it was a large falcon. This is in fact a peregrine falcon. And looking at the streaking to the underside of the body, we know that this is a juvenile. Here's a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a long tail, and this one has a relatively large head and wings held out very straight. This is a Cooper's hawk. Also, if we look at the tail, we can see that it's a bit rounded because the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. And you can see that white tip on the outer tail feather is much shorter than the ones on the central feathers. So another way to confirm it. And the orange breast indicates that this is an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk. Again, note the dark belly band and the dark patagial bars. All red tails show those, plus the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail indicate that it's an adult. And this one's probably just the typical Eastern or Borealis subspecies. You can see this one has a white throat. It's fairly heavily marked, but not real heavily marked like we expect on the Northern. So real nice looking adult Borealis or Eastern subspecies red-tailed hawk. Here we have a vulture that is very black in color. We can see a very short tail with a straight trailing edge, and we see that the white is only at the wingtips. This bird has a very compact shape overall. It is a black vulture, and we see that it has a yellow patagial tag, 247. And actually, this is a black vulture that we've seen in past years as well. And I've submitted that code and gotten the information back that this bird was born locally in 2016, making this black vulture eight years old. And like I said, we've seen it multiple times over the years. So it's likely that this bird just hangs out in this area and is not migrating any significant distance away. But it's fun to see. We saw it yesterday and then again today, and we probably saw it one other time previously this season when it was too high to read the number but it seems like every time we see a black vulture with a yellow tag it is this bird so kind of cool to see and we'll end with one more unique bird here's a sharp shinned hawk that came over towards the end of the day today and it's molting its tail feathers so you can see that the outer tail feathers are extremely short as they are growing in so just an interesting observation for this bird 
All right, let's take a look at hawk count to see the totals from the past week. So that's starting on October 12th. And looking at the numbers, you can see that every day in the past week, we've had at least 100 migrants with the peak day being yesterday. October 17th with 436 migrants. And looking at the numbers, you can see that the turkey vulture numbers have really been picking up with a couple days recently with over 100, including 313 yesterday. We've also had really steady numbers of exhibitors, not any huge days, but you know, days with 50 Sharpies, 40 Sharpies, a couple days with good numbers of Cooper's Hawks, 23 was the peak day yesterday. And we also see that the numbers of red-tailed hawks are starting to pick up with 18 and 19. So overall, the numbers are pretty steady this time of year. Still a really good variety of raptors coming through. The vulture numbers are picking up. The late season beautio numbers are picking up. And we're still in a good time for the peak of the exhibitors and still getting a good number of falcons as well. Over the next few weeks, we'll begin to transition away from the falcons and exhibitors, and it'll become more about the vultures and the late season beautios like the red tails and red shoulders and bald eagles. And of course, soon we will begin to see our first golden eagles of the season. So I know everyone's looking forward to that. So I hope you can join us out sometime soon at the Ashland Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.